Hey, Star Wars fans and Rule the Galaxy fans, welcome back to chapter 127 of the Rule the Galaxy podcast. Uh, we had a special show real quick earlier this week with uh, Mr. Mark Newbold of StarWars.com, the Star Wars Insider, Bantha Tracks, Making Tracks. This guy's everywhere when it comes to Star Wars, and he lives in England, and he's a friend of ours, so it was glad to have him on the show. But uh, this is Joe in the pilot seat as usual. Again, it's chapter 127 of Rule the Galaxy. Uh, you can always follow us at Rule the Galaxy SW on Twitter. Uh, you can email us at Rule the Galaxy SW at gmail.com or just Rule the Galaxy on Facebook or YouTube. And we've got some of our regular co hosts with us tonight. Some could make it, some couldn't make it. But then we've got a special guest. We, we were going to have him on the other night and all kinds of craziness on our end kept him from being here, but he was kind and gracious enough to come back. Uh, so we'll get to him in a minute. And before we do, I'm going to hop to one of our regular co-hosts and welcome him to the show. Mr. Brent Dykeman, how are you, sir? What up? What up? So yeah, get to uh, talk the wars, escape into the world far, far away. So Joe, you know how I've been ab- addicted, I would say, obsessed, addicted with this, this their uh, Star Wars Legion tabletop game. Yeah. Um, uh, Kentucky, uh, Elizabethtown, E Town, what the locals call it. Yep. There's a game called, uh, there's a game store called Hard Knocks. There was about 12 players, drove down with three of the guys that I play with on Fridays, uh, played three games, finished two and one. Nice. The bad part about that is two of my three games were against the other guys that I came down there with. <laughs> so I beat one of them and I lost to one of them. Okay. Um, and then I just, uh, I beat another player that yeah, my Wookiees went to town. Um, Good. Just to let you know, I've also decided to scrap playing the clones and I'm going to be playing the droids, my least favorite faction. And I bought a couple stat writers, the guys that hover around mm-hmm. and uh, Qui-Gon or yeah, that's what Qui-Gon yeah. has, has to like save uh, our friend Jar Jar from. So yeah. So that's my Legion world. Uh, there was some discussion in our Legion group of talking about doing some sort of battle reports or doing something like that too. So I know that would make you excited, throw it up on the Rule the Galaxy page, but that's where I'm at with my Legion. That's where I'm at with my Star Wars for the week. You got it. Well, we would love to see that, especially posting some some videos up on YouTube. I think that's great. Fans love to see it. They love to see that miniature Star Wars world that you live in and I can't wait until you take it with us to the uh, ICCC in Nashville oh. and, and play that and have people come to our booth and visit us and play. So I'm excited about that. So thanks for the update. While D-Doc is hopping on here, and we'll get to him in one second, let's just hop in with our special guest, Mr. Jonathan Davis. You probably know Jonathan from, well, he's been on, <laughs> just reading his stats here, he's been on 500 audiobooks, over 40 Star Wars audiobooks. And I know we love him because we've all started listening to them. And the Darth Bane trilogy, the Kenobi book, uh, I just finished uh, the second time through the the Kenobi by John Jackson Miller, the audio version today, actually. So, uh, Jonathan, welcome to Rule the Galaxy for the first time. And and thanks for being a part of it. Hey, y'all. May the force be with you all. I'm so happy to be here. And thank you for having me. Well, we, we, uh, we were so sorry that... Things were, uh, again, crazy on Tuesday night of this week. So glad that we could reschedule this and get you here. And and honestly, you know, we want to give you a chance to not only tell us some backgrounds and your connection to the Star Wars world, but also just the world you live in there with the the voice work you do and the narration you do. And I, did I read somewhere that you also do some work for Max Payne and Red Dead Redemption? I have, yeah. Yes, I, wow. I'm... Um... <laughs> I play pretty major villains in both Max Payne 2 and 3. Okay. Um, which is a fast... Max Payne 3 was a really cool experience, which I can get into. Um, and then, yes, I'm, all, I'm also... I think I play, like, um, a, a corrupt Mexican sheriff <laughs> in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sidecasting. Well, no, no. well, you know, it's... Sidecasting. <laughs> I'm just glad you have these varied roles here. You know, we don't want to get you typecast in any certain thing. So uh, obviously your your skills and talents are giving you some different roles here. Um, we, we always ask through our, our guests and, you know, uh, get, get kind of some feedback from them as to um, what maybe, yes, you work in Star Wars, but 
what are some of your things about Star Wars you love? Maybe some of your favorites or some of the firsts you remember about Star Wars, things like that. Are, are there some things that stand out from growing up or just, you know, over the years that drew you to Star Wars and characters or movies or books that you loved? Right, right. Well, I, I still remember the time when I when I saw Star Wars. I, you know, I must have been around uh, eight or nine, something like that. I remember, and I remember my uh, my father taking me out to. He didn't get it when we got there. He wanted to leave immediately. He was ah, I watch this crap. You know, <laughs> I, I forgot, and I think he actually left. <laughs> he actually left the theater. And like left me there, you know, to watch it alone. You Lovely. know, he went to see, I don't know what it was, maybe so like the great Santini or something else that was playing <laughs> next door. I have no idea. But um but I still remember um, you know, the first time that we saw it and just uh just the, the, the shot of of the droids, you know, walking alone on, on Tatooine and that was that's the first image that I still remember, you know, just being sucked into the story from then. Um, awesome. Yeah, and then yeah, I, that was that was my first experience with it, and I was just very. I I had been doing voiceover for many years, and I was living in New York City, and I was I had worked with. Uh, I had just started doing audiobook narration, and my it was like I think my second or third uh, project that I did was with this fellow named Kevin Thompson. And he was producing a audiobook version of the Neil Stevenson sci-fi cyberpunk novel. It's a classic, it's called Snow Crash. Highly recommend it uh, to everyone out there to see. I, I, I know they've been trying to get a, a series done of this and, and it may actually be happening on HBO or one of, one of the streaming services, but once it does, I know it's that the whole novel is going to, you know, take off again. There'll be a great interest in it. But it was a fascinating story. And that's how I met Kevin. And Kevin later became the producer, director of the Star Wars audiobooks. And I actually I think he'd been doing it even before then. Um, and then he called me in about a year later. Uh, and I got a call from my agent to come in to audition. And then I auditioned for him and a fellow at the time named Jacob Bronstein, who was the executive producer at the time. We've gone through a, a few now. The person that, that's in charge right now is a great guy named Nick Martorelli. And um, that was my beginning in uh, Star Wars. And I think my very first audiobook was, I didn't do Phantom Menace. I was involved with Attack of the Clones. That was my very first one. Yep, and then I, took, I see that went there. from there. You, know? you you did episode two and episode three, if I'm not mistaken. I so. did, I did, and that is awesome. uh, and I loved I loved the the books were so great because they added so much depth to the films, you know, and um, I think that was the thing about the early films is that there was so much detail that I thought was left out of the films themselves that I thought was that were really integral to the storyline. You know, and and um, it just added added so much. I mean, the books and if if anybody out there is not familiar with the audiobooks, I would highly recommend listening to them. Um, they have a full production. Um, it's it's the the special effects come right from Lucasfilm. Uh, it's the John Williams music, and um, the uh, sound designer or the sound or the person that edits his name, his name is Paul Goodrich. He actually won an Academy Award for sign design, sound design, and um, he's phenomenal. Kevin, the producer, is a terrific director and a ter you know really really knows how to grab the right people and use you know he's just f fantastic. And I've worked with him on a number of different projects, not just Star Wars, but. Uh, that's really um, my big connection with him, and it's uh, it's been great to work with him. You got it. You got it. Well, I'm, we're going to come back to you on that stuff in just one second. We did have one of our great co-hosts hop on here, and I think he was either having some technical difficulties or some conflicts there. Mr. D-Doc, who we, we shared your name and your nickname with Jonathan before the show. D-Doc, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. 
We got another glitch. It's always there's always something. <laughs> it's usually me. Now he's doing hand signals. <laughs> Jonathan, if you uh, I know you haven't heard our show before, probably, but it, it Brent will tell you I'm usually the one who would sit there and get locked up and everyone would laugh while I was sitting there staring at all of them. Well, let's just be honest about this with with our friend Jonathan Davis. We run this thing on a shoestring budget. We are all <laughs> we are all just regular Joes that sit around and love Star Wars. And we happen to have somebody that worked in the radio business, which is uh, Joe's son, that got them into it to begin with. Yes. Which then brought us around. But I mean, we run this on a shoestring budget. So I want to say if you listen to episode what like oh, 40 I mean. through 40 through 50, <laughs> there was there was like nothing but technical issues until Joe got his uh, his Wi-Fi situation taken care of. Yeah, Jonathan, we, we don't need to go back over that. So um, <laughs> while, while D-Doc's was, hopping it, back in. It was um, bad. <laughs> while D-Doc's hopping back in here. So um, I'm if you don't mind, I, I was just blown away because um, I was a huge consumer of the novels when they were coming out and I didn't jump into the audiobooks until much later but now I'm completely addicted to the audiobooks only because it's it just it's so much better for time and then also I think um, I think with the sound effects with the music like you mentioned um, it really takes it to another level and makes it yeah. even deeper but I was looking at this and some of my favorite legends books that you were involved with um, Shatterpoint the the uh the mace windu story mm -hmm. uh yoda's cestus or yoda's dark rendezvous cestus deception yeah. um the the vader books the the labyrinth of evil the dark lord rise of darth vader mm -hmm. um and then obviously you know kenobi kenobi's one of my favorite guys but that darth bane trilogy i wish nick was here because nick absolutely <laughs> adores the darth bane trilogy and so do i and i never read those books at all hard copy the only time i've ever done anything with them is i've listened to all three of them i've listened to each of them twice now um on the audio version so your work on those was fantastic and those are just the legends books i mean those aren't even the ones that are i'm doing air quotes here canon right. now in my mind they're canon but but i mean were there certain characters storylines anything like that that really stood out to you or with with this being a job and you're really looking at like i've got to do this well blah 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 do you get to allow yourself to get into the storylines or the characters or anything like that because you you do some great work and some great voices on all of them thank you well, absolutely and and you know it darth the darth bane trilogy is my favorite out of out of everything it's st it still is um there are some other projects you know kenobi i love the master and apprentice that came out recently oh, some yeah. of the ones that you mentioned actually that uh you, i don't even think you can get dark rendezvous I, I i love that story i was a fan of dark lord also um and uh we've had some multicast work that we've done recently and there's been some really cool stories some of the really great um anthologies uh a certain point of view yeah the ones you know that they did they did it for um a new hope and empire strikes empire. back um but anyway um getting back to to like yes um i'm not it's funny and, and i'm curious like when you talk to mark my great colleague the great mark thompson um <laughs> i i'm not like a natural mimic like mark is you know mark is somebody that could just boo 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 you know you know i i need to you know, when I'm in my booth and I'm focused, you know, that's that's when I have to study and really get, you know, really do my work and then focus and get into it. What what I like, to, what what I am very good at or what <laughs> I like to do is is, as you said, really get involved in the storyline so that even in the narration, for me, the world itself is a character. It's not just the dialogue that's being happening, but but really the narration itself, you really have to paint a picture, you know, and deconstruct the language. Uh, almost, I look at it almost like a musical score so that when you're looking at the words, you know, you kind of know what are the operative words to punch, you know, uh, mm -hmm. when you're doing a scene that's full of action, when you're doing something that's um, full of emotion. So yes, everything that you're saying, I mean, it's, it, 
and we have a you know the thing about the audiobooks it's almost like it's like a marathon compared to doing other kinds of voiceover <laughs> so it's you can really you know even compared to doing um animation you know that's only like you know maybe 25 minutes and then also if you have a character you may not even be doing that much you may be doing maybe about 10 minutes you know in an episode you know some people may be doing more but um it, it, you know we, when we do audiobooks we the the norm for instance i'll be doing uh, i haven't gotten the script yet but i'm scheduled to go into a session in a few weeks for brotherhood the new um so excited for that yes story um and uh you know that's like that will probably take six days to do and we'll be in the studio seven eight hours you know and that's you know it's a long it's a long process to do and that's why you can get really you could really immerse yourself into the world that that's absolutely awesome before we get to brent let's try one more time <laughs> with our pal D Doc, let make it work, D Doc. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. I I literally uh, I have uh, an old laptop. Well, not an old laptop. It's my wife's other one, which not her work one. I finally have my own setup here. The webcam was not good on this. Had to get a webcam. I spent forty five minutes before this podcast making sure everything worked. And then I go to click on the Zoom meeting and it said I needed to download an app for it. And then it disconnected my mic. It disconnected my camera, everything. I'm glad the mic wasn't connected because I think I dropped an F-bomb or two. And I looked at the mic and I saw it wasn't muted. I'm like, they're recording right now and they can probably hear me. So I'm on. <laughs> We're glad you're here. Um, we're going to give you a second um, to get everything caught up there. We're going to throw it over to Brent so he can ask some questions to uh, to Jonathan. So. I have multiple questions only because I want to kind of see if your process is similar to Mark's, but I'm going to start off with how does one get into the voice acting? How does one get into narration work? Do you come from an acting background? Cause you started talking about the script, like it's kind of a musical score. Do you come from a musical background? Like what, what background do you have that took you into this narration world? I began in theater um, I, I was a theater actor for many years and then, um, I kind of was introduced. I kind of, we mentioned this before, but, uh, you know, I kind of discovered that there's other facets and mediums within our industry, yeah. such as voiceover. And, uh, I kind of just started doing a little bit of that. And then that kind of became you know, I really enjoyed it. And I was, it became my bread and butter doing more voiceover than other things. And when I moved to New York, uh, I did some, I was doing animation, some animated series and, and commercial voiceover narration for documentaries. And then one day, uh, my agent called me up and introduced me to the world of audiobooks. And then gotcha. that kind of, that just, that was the beginning, you know, of it. And I was very fortunate to do, um, to do some high profile stuff in the very beginning. And then it led to Star Wars and uh, that kind of right. took off from there. That's and awesome. so, and so listening to Mark, when he's talked to us, he's talked about this punch recording, basically where he flubs up, you can go back and you can punch record. Um, and so my guess is your process is very similar where you character pop in and out of and just go straight through it. Or what is do you go through and do the punch recording and kind of come back and re rewind? What is kind of your process in that six hour session when you're doing well, that work? When we're doing I'm uh, when we're doing the Star Wars work. Um, I guess we do, we are doing punch. No, actually, we do. We do a what they call a straight record. So it's a little different. You, you do go back and, and correct yourself. Um, but, you, but there's no like lag. It's not like you have to stop with the, you have mm. to stop in the end engineer, or you have to go back, you know, you just in a straight record, if I flub almost like still like in film acting too, when if somebody makes a mistake, they just take a, they take a beat and then they continue on the camera still rolling. Um, it's the same in audio. When you do a straight record, 
flub, you know, just take a beat and you just keep on, you know, just give it a breath so that they can edit it and you just keep on, you know. And that's actually, a lot of people prefer that because you can do multiple takes, you know, if even, let's say you didn't like the way you did it, you can say it three different ways, you know. Uh, hmm. it's, it's a little more difficult with, you know, uh, the marathon audiobooks because you don't want to do a whole section all over again. But the more time that you've been doing it, it becomes easier and easier, just your technique. Don't we all wish we had that in real life to where we could just <laughs> say something, <laughs> take a pause, say it differently, and see what reaction we get? We probably all would do much better in our in our marriages <laughs> and as parenting. I want that 30-second <laughs> delay. I want that, like, I want to say it and yeah. then, like, oh, crap, I shouldn't say it and hit the mute or the beep button Edited because I out. said something stupid. Yeah. 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 I want that 30-second <laughs> delay. That's what I need. So, uh, Jonathan, <laughs> I, I will tell you, um, so, again, Nick and I and Alfie, who Alfie couldn't be here tonight, his work shifts are crazy. So he he wants to be here because he's just a Star Wars fanatic, he probably higher than all of us here on the on the round table. But um, the three of us pretty much read and consumed every novel that came out. And then obviously, like I said, we've made switches over to the audiobooks. Brent, um, he he is many times called the, the dark books side and audiobooks, the dark side, because you know he's a visual <laughs> guy and he likes to watch Star Wars and and I get it. Um, but you guys, but you guys have sucked me into this. Yes. sucked me into it. <laughs> and have. I'll be honest. And I'll be honest. What Jonathan said was one hundred percent. Like I didn't believe it, but Mass is like one. Mass was the one who really goaded me because he yeah. was sarcastic. He's like, "Fine, don't read them then or listen to them." But he yeah. was also the one that said the same thing Jonathan said. The production value on all of the Star Wars stuff is top notch, and you do hear the lightsaber cracks and you do yeah. hear the, yep. the jet engines and you, when a ship's landing, you hear the deceleration and all of Agreed. that, all of that sound mixing and everything is, is phenomenal for those books. And, and then you take in d who's with us here and d is, d would you say you've read and listened to the least probably amount of books in Star Wars? Probably, yeah. I mean, I'm a big audiobook guy as well, which I did listen to Master and Apprentice, which I've listened to like I, I still haven't finished it yet, but I'm 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 pretty close to like three quarters of the way through that. But um yeah, that's a new world to me. I've been an audiobook guy, I've done Game of Thrones, all the Harry Potter ones, all that kind of stuff. And um yeah, I just love audiobooks personally, just because I'm not the biggest reader. I'm always moving around and doing something. And it's like, I love stories. And once I finally got Audible and started listening to these stories while I'm doing stuff, I mean, it's great because of the detail you get from these stories. And, you know, you don't, you get a lot more detail than you do on screen, actually. So absolutely. I agree with you. And, and, and Jonathan, all, go ahead. Go ahead. No. Well, I was just going to say what I love. It's just, it, you know, we do live in a kind of a kinetic world and we're we're always moving. So, you know, I love I mean. You know, I'll I'll pop something in just to you know if I if I'm just active just so I can be like we do now everything everybody has pods you know and ear pods and stuff so you can always be moving and that's that's what uh, I just see the world it it just keeps on burgeoning and blossoming you know it just seems to be more and more and more. I agreed and I and I think I was going to hop in there your comment earlier on the prequel movie slash books I would 100% agree with you the people who have read the books or listened to the audiobooks compared to just watching the original prequels by themselves yes. have told me to a person, wow, I really, really enjoy the prequels even more because of the books that are, you know, of the movies and the books that surround the movies. So I agree with you 100% of how much was left out or not put into the movies that was really the depth you needed in the prequels. So, yeah. You know, I'll give you another example. Um, Rogue One, one of the audiobooks that I did was called Catalyst, and it was the prequel to Rogue One. I love that story yep, it because it's it's Jyn Erso's father, so it's all of it's it's the focus on him and his relationship with. Oh my God, I forgot his name. Krennic. <laughs> Orson Krennic. Yes, Orson. Yes, yes. It's it's that relationship and. It's amazing. And it, it's also just you kind of, 
it's it's all about how he comes to decide to build a flaw yep. within the Death Star, you know, so that it becomes easy to destroy. You know, I mean, it it, it it's just it's it's kind of fascinating, and they they really kind of gloss over it in the movie, and I like the movie, but they kind of gloss over that a little because he's not as integral in the film itself. Or in that storyline, he's not as integral. However, Catalyst is fantastic because it's all about, you learn more and more, more about Krennic, too, and how he rises to power. And that they were like best friends. And, you know, and you kind of see the t deterioration of that. And it has Saw Gerrera, too, in it. He's a big part of it. Who also, I don't think in the film was too clear, you know, and in the, in the, in the Catalyst story in the book, it's, he, he is. They're, right. they're all kind of you really get rich detail with all those characters that's another example you know I and, agreed. A, and a very and a really great audiobook too i agreed i i've listened to both of them you are correct brent or d doc yeah another quick question i have uh one just thinking of it now like just listening to jonathan talk about the stories like when you're recording do you feel yourself lost in the story kind of yourself sometimes like where you're just like you're you you must become part of it because you're playing every character, but I'm sure there must be a decent amount of, uh, I don't know, emotional attachment to these stories just because you feel like you're playing it out. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. And, and even as I was saying before, like just describing a planet or a landscape that to me can be very encompassing and moving too, not just doing the, uh, character work itself but just living the living in the world you know and i love that about star wars too is each planet is so so unique you know so when we're talking about um dagobah or or uh, coruscant or whichever you know planet and we're really getting into the detail of what that planet is or a lot of the planets that are mentioned in the books you know it, it can be kind of fascinating or just learning you know i mean we all saw, I'm sure, yes, I know you did, you know, like in Book of, of Boba Fett, the world where suddenly you finally see um, uh, the, the Tusken Raiders, mm -hmm. you know, and um, oh my God, I'm so, I'm, I'm so out of it. I, what's their <laughs> name? They're not the, I mean, the, the other name for the Tusken Raiders. Sand people. The sand, Tusken... no, yeah. isn't there a, Wait a minute. Um, hold on. Or maybe it is. Oh, I thought there was another, another. Name. Okay. Well, anyway, but but for the, for the in the um the in Kenobi, the book Kenobi, you really start to um you get a, a sense of. I mean, the storyline in in Book of Boba Fett, where finally you see mm -hmm. you see their tribe and you yep. see Boba kind of you know getting to know who they are. That was in the book Kenobi. I mean, it's, it's really detailed about this about about them, and um, so so there's a lot to learn from the audiobooks themselves. I mean, and I think I wouldn't be surprised if you know you were talking about Darth Bane being legend. I I'm, I I think eventually they're going to slip him in somewhere. I mean, I think that's happening with a lot of characters. You know, we saw like Cad Bane be introduced and. You know, I, I just think that you're going to see more and more characters from all different areas kind of be introduced in the future. Nope, I agree. I, I real quick, I want to touch on you mentioned, you know, some of the, the Rogue One, the Catalyst, like you said, about some of the current canon books you've done. Lords of the Sith. Um, that was the one with um, Darth Vader, Grand Moff Tarkin, I believe. Um, yeah, I think they were fighting. Um, it was the Twi'lek. Uh, Twi'leks, uh, yes. Yep, fighting the Twi'lek rebels. That was a great book. Mastered Apprentice, as D Doc mentioned. I think everyone here, to a man, really enjoys Master and Apprentice. But one that that I saw you were involved with, and it was, I think, it was more of a conglomeration, a group thing. Was the uh, Dooku Jedi Lost? Um, right. Were you you were working in a group on that one, right? There was multiple people playing yes. multiple roles in that i can't remember which role you played in that i apologize i had a very small part of that i i, I was qui-gon but um and uh but i didn't do i didn't he he didn't really he wasn't featured as 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 much in the in that storyline but what was great was when we did do that it was before covid 
and we were all we all went to the studio together, and oh. all of us were in one booth. So it, there must have been uh, ten, at least ten people, and we were all in there working together. That, and that was been, really great. Yeah, that would have been know? a blast. And we we joked because for a long time, Brent was one of the only Dooku fans of the show. We've all kind of slowly but surely started going over to realizing that Dooku was actually a much better character. And this book, this <laughs> Master yeah. Apprentice, Dooku, the Dark Plagueis novel, those all bring some rich yes. things about Dooku into the Star Wars realm. So, right. yeah, but we always talk about Dooku here. So anyway, go ahead, Brent. So I will say, because when I finally got pulled over to the dark side and listening to the audiobooks, <laughs> the first the first trilogy of audiobooks I listened to was the Darth Bane trilogy. And it happened to be, I'm an educator, so we had a fall break. I listened to all three books three or four in one week. Yeah. Wow. Because wow. I was also, it was also right when I first discovered the Star Wars Legion stuff. So I was assembling models and building terrain and I was listening to the Bane trilogy while I was doing it. But I consumed, like, what is that, like 30 hours of audiobooks in about a week. So yeah, that's kind of disgusting, but yes, it, but that's, I think it's a testament to you. And I just want to say that because like I was drawn into your narration of those books. Now, is there somebody that sticks with you? Um, is there like, I, you said Bane was one of your favorite and you still think about it. Is there a specific character that you feel still sticks with you after reading all 40 of these books that you've done? Wow. Like just like an ancillary character does it get, you know any any main any character, any character anything yeah. any character yeah any, any character well, that one like is like this is me or is there one that like <laughs> you come back to and is like i really loved describing this character just well, any of that well it's always fun to do you know there was a time and it's it's changed a bit but there was a while there where where mark was doing all of the you know like Luke and people like that. And then I was just doing the Sith. <laughs> you know? It's like I was doing the dark characters and he was doing the light, you know, and um, so that was kind of funny for a while. It's changed a bit, which is wonderful is that they've there's more and more. I like it. They're, they've expanded. So you have a lot of great narrators and they're always adding new people that are, you know, specifically right for each book. And I really appreciate that. Um, there was a time, it's funny when, and I don't know if you talked to Mark about this, about his process, but it wasn't specifically a character, Brent, but when I did the Darth Bane trilogy, I still remember it was very rich. There were a lot of characters in it from the original Sith Academy and like a lot of his teachers and mentors that he had. And I remember when I was going through it because, you know, those aren't those are characters that you are creating as the narrator, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, they're not known, you know, it's particularly in the Darth Bane book. So I had to I'm curious about what Mark does sometimes, but I cast it. That's what I tend to do. It's like I cast the story. So I'll see like, OK, well, this guy. He reminds me of Omar Sharif. I love it. <laughs> you know, or this person okay. is, you know, like this Romanian actor I saw in a movie, you know, okay. and, you know, you know, that kind of thing. So I start to really look at it that way, you know, um, or this he, person is, Ga is Captain Steubing from the Love Lord. It. <laughs> love it. <laughs> so I will go into one thing because there yeah. is, a, th this kind of is marked, like he did say this. Um, listening to what is it a new dawn i think is the name of the book oh God. there was a character oh. there was a character that i called the gilbert godfrey because every time he came on i swear he to it? No, yes yeah. and then when i made a con when he the first time he was on i was like the gilbert godfrey voice because he made a comment about it and he was like he just started laughing he was like yeah when i kind of i tried to attach this is this is kind of the feeling he gave to me and yeah. so when that character came on this is kind of what he gave so he was attempting to do Gilbert but Godfrey so I nailed it I was like so yeah very similar to that but yeah it was the Gilbert Godfrey voice and he was he was I was out of town I believe on business the last time he was on the show and there are two in the high republic that he's doing right now that one is Dr. Evil I swear it's Dr. Evil <laughs> and the other and the other is Matthew McConaughey 
Where you, you can almost hear him going, all right, all right, all right. It, both of them are in these books, and I love it. And I wanted to ask him about it, but I didn't. I, there's, there's another one too that I think was Donald Trump too, because there was like it was in the first book. <laughs> yeah, it was in the first book, and it sounded like there was like a there was an ode. He was the supreme yeah. emperor or whatever. Yeah. There was an ode to a Donald Trump in there too. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we're taking your time here, Jonathan. D Doc, oh, I'm fine. Go, go right ahead if you it. have something. We're, we're Brent and I are monopolizing. And you can- no, I was just uh, I, I'm just uh, enjoying listening to you guys. This is one of those moments where I'm on the podcast and feel like I'm listening to one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, um, no worries, no worries. Um, so looking at all this and looking at these different things, um, have you ever thought? I know Mark got a chance to be a part of the Star Wars Visions. It was a small, brief role in Star Wars oh, Visions. That's um, right. But but have you? Have you ever said, hey, D. Brad- D. Bradley Baker, I know you do nine different clone voices, you know, in a current show. Can can I steal one from you and do, you know, have you ever thought about getting into the animated world of Star Wars at all? Oh, God, I would love to. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, we did have a great, I, I know um, Mark's been to, we've both been to, we've all been to different conferences, um, but we had a great time back in 2015 um, where we were part of a Star Wars celebration in Anaheim. And um, this is another series of books that we did, which this great author named Ian Desher wrote. And he's fantastic. What he does is he takes um, movies, you know, popular movies, not just the Star Wars trilogy or Star Wars stories, but he even did Back to the Future and, and a few others. I think he's, he's doing Lord of the Rings, too. And what he does is he writes them in verse. So he it's, it's so it's like William Shakespeare's yes. Star Wars. And it'd be like, you know, the Empire striketh back and stuff like that. But it's fa- he's phenomenal. So he'll write things that they'll all be soliloquies. And you can if you if you really are into Shakespeare and the Bard, you can see a lot of parallels, you know, like there's a whole thing with Vader where it's, he says, like, do I bleed, you know, which is which is a Shylock um, monologue and or or uh, R2-D2 is kind of like Puck from Midsummer Night's Dream. And it's fascinating. It's a really great. So we performed them live oh, in uh, at Anaheim. Uh, and that was an amazing uh experience because we get there and we were prepping and there must have been 2000 people in the auditorium and it was and fans you know and it was and and we got to meet a lot of a lot of people that were people that are involved with rebel force radio and um uh, uh kyle newman who, mm-hmm. who you know who who was a oh, big yeah. fan and um a lot of people that are involved in the video games and it was just really just to and we all got to meet and perform together so that was a really great experience i don't know why i'm, I'm leading away yeah, you're from fine. what you asked but in a way it was just uh the answer was yes but at the same time that was an experience where we got to really get to meet other people too gotcha d doc uh, d- just listening to this now makes me think why is there not a star wars broadway play has that ever been uh, something done before <laughs> you know uh i'm not i'm may, i don't want to be that i'm speaking out of turn but i know ian the dean desher was actually talking about doing that and taking taking the piece that he wrote and and converting it into a stage piece you know and, and he was I, talking about at the time, it was the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. That's which, which is very well reputed uh, in Ashland, Oregon, and that's wow. where he was talking about workshopping it. But I don't know what ever happened. That's incredible. Was, I, I mean, just thought. listening to that, like I, I'm a big Broadway fan myself, and it's like obviously Disney has gone and done. You know, mo- uh, there's a decent amount of Disney musicals that have turned into very successful Broadway plays, and they they do really well with it. And it's like I'm just sitting here thinking, damn. There, there could be like an incredible drama technically where you, you could probably cover from the prequels to the original trilogy in one play. Technically you could have the first act as the prequel trilogy. And then the second act as the OT. <laughs> that would be wild. 
Right. It's got to happen. <laughs> you got to write the music for it, though, D-Doc. Oh, what, song, yeah. what, song, what songs are you going to come into? <laughs> that's, where, that's where it comes into it. You're going to have Luke and uh, Darth Vader, like, singing at each other while they're in their, you know, final lightsaber battle. But... <laughs> no, dude, that, that one I can see. That's a West Side. That's just a, a lightsaber battle West Side story action right there. First act would end with Obi-Wan versus Anakin. Second act ends with Luke versus Darth Vader. I mean, come on. That's a no-brainer right there. That's a long thinking player musical. You could shorten it. Just have just have C3PO narrate it with uh the way that he does to the Ewoks in the Return of the Jedi. I I'm all for that. I'm sure Anthony Daniels is always looking for work and he would volunteer for that <laughs> tomorrow. I mean, I think they're getting back into the droids series. It's going to be on Disney Plus to do some narration. Um, Speaking of Anthony what? Daniels, Go right I'm going to segue into Jonathan. You talked about celebration. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, I think it's the Imperial Commissars Convention is actually what it stands for. Uh, sorry, the Imperial Commissars Collectibles Convention. That's what the ICCC stands for. ICCC, <laughs> Jonathan. It's going on April 29th through May 1st in nashville tennessee this year mm. um our podcast has only been around for two years and while we've done 127 episodes now we've with covid and other things have not really been able to venture out and do things and we were invited to run a booth as a podcast at this convention coming up in two months so we are super excited they're going to have guests there like ian mcdermott anthony daniels mm. john um uh, jonathan what the heck going on? Just James Arnold Taylor, uh, Matt right. Lanter, Timothy Zahn. Um, we just oh, wow. found out today, I believe Anna Graves, who played Satine, is going to yeah. be there from the Clone Wars. So, so Jonathan, you mentioned Celebration. We're going to this for our first time. Um, have you been to a lot now that you're this involved with Star Wars? Have you been to a lot of conventions or events um, besides the one you mentioned earlier? Uh, just um, uh, Comic-Con. Okay. A few Comic Cons um in in New York and um uh one in Chicago, one in we went to we all, we were perform we also performing the project I I was just mentioning. We went to Y'all Fest in um in South Carolina, in Charleston, South Carolina. Y'all Fest? A, yeah, it's a young adult literature festival. Oh. So oh, I thought it was Southerner. Hey y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It is. I mean, yes, okay. it is, y'all. But that's what that's the that's the joke. It's like young adult literature, something. Okay. But it's okay. Y'all fest, and they always have it in Charleston. It's you a know. great place to visit. I was just there. Charleston's an amazing place. place. Yes. Hey, um, do you ever find that you you do or do not keep up with the current stuff? I know you mentioned Book of Boba Fett. Obviously, it sounds like you watch mm -hmm. that. Do you do you find that with Star Wars being part of your career? that you don't say, hey, I'm going to go check out The Mandalorian or I'm going to see what's on next on Disney Plus or anything like that? Or do you keep pretty much on top of that? I do. I do. Yeah, I've been watching. I've been watching it with with my son, too. I make sure that he's involved, you know, um, and so not everything. Sure. But I like I, I'll be, I haven't seen The Bad Batch, you know, um, but for the the new disney uh shows mm -hmm. i i do watch the mandalorian i do see the, i did see the the book of boba fett i am looking forward to seeing the kenobi series and the and the others that are coming out uh the uh cassian mm -hmm. um i know that's that's a series too so yeah i i, I am looking forward to it you know and um i i do try to to keep up you know with with and and they're all crossing over so even if uh some of us when we do the audiobook work if we focus on certain characters there's so much crossover that i think we need to <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i'm I sure mean, i already heard about what you know some i got like a i i don't have the script yet for brotherhood but you know my producer said look these are all the characters that are going to make appearances and i was like oh wow wow and there was a, <laughs> you have to really brush up on a lot of characters you know are um, there so yeah that just no. makes that yeah. that just makes me wonder if there are there some that are intimidating and are there some that you feel like you have to get right like yoda do you feel intimidated by having to get yoda to sound uh, like yoda uh, is there is there some okay 
Yeah, not not as much. That doesn't intimidate me as much. Um, you know, here, well, here, you know, I, I remember many years ago. I think, I think Joe had mentioned Shatterpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's tough, you know, to do like Mace or somebody like him. Mm -hmm. And, and I'll be, you know, what they did recently, which I think was completely right. They, because they've been re-releasing the Legends audiobooks. So, and trying to get, you know, pump them up. Um, so like Kenobi was re-released, -re the Bane trilogy. They re-released Shatterpoint, but they recast it. And they had... And an African American actor who's fantastic, and he came in and he did the role, and I I think that's that's the way it should be, you know. Um, so that 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 can be, you know, like I I didn't want to do an impression, you know, yeah. that. Um, uh, but no, not necessarily. As as I said, me I like to when I know who I'm going to be doing, if they're going to be iconic characters in it, versus like Darth Vane, where I have freedom to create, mm -hmm. you know, or some other maybe a. Battlefront, that was a great book. I remember doing that mm -hmm. and I had freedom to create the characters there. But no, when you're doing like a, a Master and Apprentice or Kenobi, a Kenobi-centric book like this is going to be, um, I, yeah, I have to really brush up on, on the character work and make sure that I'm truthful. Yeah. Good, D-Doc. So now, like, are you, I guess you're going to have to add age to your Kenobi voice, right? Uh, compared to Master and Apprentice, what you did? Like, are you going to try to tweak that a little bit, would you well, say? Well, he's more, if, if you've heard, have you heard Kenobi yet? Did you listen I, to that story? I listen, Jackson I've Miller? listened to it, yeah. yeah. That storyline, he, it is afterwards. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's after Revenge of the Sith. Um so it's kind of it's kind of the world where the series is going to be going to into right. motherhood the one that's coming out actually oh, yeah. occurs what i can say it is it does it occurs between attack of the clones and revenge of the sith yep i did read so that so that's kind of he's going to be it's somewhere in between it's kind of you know it's it's the <laughs> obi-wan that we saw in those in those early movies um and that's my choice. No, I, I wouldn't really age him. You know, it'd be, it would be, I still do Ewan McGregor. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of what, you know, he's the, he's the archetype. 100%. 100%. Brent or D-Doc, other questions you want to hit or go ahead. Uh, and, and another one too. Um, have you ever talked to uh, Liam Neeson at all? Because I feel like your Qui-Gon voice is like incredible. <laughs> I mean, has he ever heard, uh, do, oh, do you know by goodness. any chance if he's ever heard your audio of I him? I don't know. I love Liam Neeson. I love Liam Neeson. Um, and, and I, uh, I've always been a fan of his, you know, since like some of his early movies. Um, and, uh, and I have friends that worked with him and would tell me stories about him. So I would kind of use those stories as the impetus for, for my character, you know, because I, I loved repeating the stories that they told me about him. So um, that helped me a lot. Well, thank you for, for that, though. I, real um, quick, this is a silly one, but you guys have, you'll know the answer. The one with him and Quaid and Cher where he was playing a mute character. Oh, yes. Well, do you remember Suspect. the time? Suspect. Gosh, that was such a great movie. If you haven't right. seen Suspect with Cher, uh, Dennis Quaid or Randy Quaid? Which one's the not Ooh, crazy sure. one? The crazy. The, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask which one. Crazy or not? <clears throat> not Must crazy. Have been Dennis. Yes. Yeah, and I Cher. can't see Randy. <laughs> if, you ha if you haven't seen that movie, I'm telling you right now. That is a two thumbs up. I crazy or not crazy, Quaid. Sorry, Quaid family. Well, I, I, loved, anyway. I loved Liam. And uh, the first time I saw him was uh, The Bounty. It was a Mel Gibson film. Really? Kind of a remake of Mutiny on the Bounty. And it's got an amazing cast because Daniel Day-Lewis is in it. I mean, but in oh, smaller wow. roles, like supporting roles. <laughs> but that's the first time I saw him. He's got an incredible role in it. And that's where I went, who is this? You know, that was kind of the I'm first time. You have to time. check that one out. Um, now I got an off the wall question that's not necessarily related. Are you a sports fan by any chance? S yes and no. <laughs> okay. Well, because I was doing a deep dive, not a deep dive, but a, like a, a cursory glance 
Um, and it looked like you went to Miami University in the early hey. Yes, in, in Florida. In the early heyday of like the early yep. oh, UL. No, yeah. you did. Like early the arts, the, the Schellenberger days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, like, I, yeah. So it's what it looked like. And so that was, I mean, is that where you did undergrad or grad school or undergraduate? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, undergraduate. Yeah. It was when, yep, they had like Testa Verde and oh, Ozar and people like that. That was. That's uh, thanks for outing my age. I'm I, look, look, thanks, Brent. I'm, hey, it's on the internet. Somebody could look it up, like I did. And I was also gonna ask if it was accurate because uh, I think what is uh, when we talked to Mark Thompson. Mark Thompson's like, man, I have to pay IMDb to correct this. I'm not gonna pay IMDb. Like you have to get like an account to correct it. So I didn't know if that was completely accurate information. So. We're, no, we're yeah, all football fans here, I, so like the three oh, of us that are on right I, now. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we got crazy. an eagle. We got an eagle fan. We got a Steeler fan, and I'm an Atlanta Falcon fan. So oh, that's well. That, I lived in Atlanta for for a decade, so I, I I'm I have a lot of great ties to that city. Uh, if I had to pick a football team, it'd probably be the Dolphins. Okay. You know, okay. And, and sorry. No, no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's all right. Uh oh. <laughs> well, no. I mean, I mean, they just they just got rid of their coach for a stupid reason, I think. But anyways, who is now no, a Steeler coach? He's now a CCA. The yeah, only no. reason that's where I didn't really tell you where I grew up and stuff, but I, um, I that's kind of where I that's where I went to high school and that's where I went to okay. college in Miami. So, so that's why I just have some slight ties. But truthfully. Uh, the sport that I follow is tennis. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, that's, that's the sport I, I love to play and I love to follow it. That's the no really the only one that I really uh, follow religiously. Yeah. So so that's are right. you a Joker? Or are you a Nadal? Or are you Federer? Which one do you think's the um, supreme? Oh, that's hard to say. I know. Um, that's why yeah, I that's hard to or say. Or he could go back and say he's a McEnroe, Connors, Bjorn. I'm not going that that's far back. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, back. I used to like Becker. I used to like Oh, Becker. yeah. Um, oh, okay. I, I did. Um, yeah. And then there was, you know, between Sampras and Agassi, I was, oh, at yeah. the time, I, I, I wasn't really much of a Sampras fan, even though he was the best at the time. I thought he was too robotic. Oh, now I'm getting into the weeds of this. I don't want to do <laughs> Yeah, this no, is, come on. This is true. I was just throwing it out there just to kind of see about your a little bit of your history, but I can talk sports no, all I go day, to the but US I know that's Open. the wrong podcast. I go every year. I go to the U.S. Open every year. And Good I for to, you. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Well, I'm in the area, so that's what, you know, I, I try to do it. Does, have you ever seen uh, Kramer get a ball at, at the U.S. Open? Oh, cheekers. I, <laughs> I have seen Tony Bennett there and a few okay. other people. Yeah, because he's right. like a mainstay. You know, a lot of those like New York icons, you know, that you run into. That's such a crazy experience when you run into when you're in a specific city and you see somebody and you go like, oh, that that's so New York when you yeah. run into somebody, you know, like this is an this is kind of off the cuff. I'm just going to throw a story. But many years ago, I was in kind of telling that story you know when you're in new york and you run into like woody allen or yoko ono or jerry seinfeld and you go paul simon i remember running to paul simon and i'm a short guy i'm kind of you know that's why that's why i'm in voiceover (laughs) (laughs) because if people saw me they'd kind of think why why aren't you with a hobbit you know why aren't you in that film and now that would be a dream of mine you had talked about you know animation really that that's another story because I'm not just a Star Wars fan. I have a lot of other sure. you know, areas you know, that I like. But anyway, I remember running into Paul Simon, and, and I kind of went, am I taller than him? And I remember getting like, really <laughs> close to him just to see. And I was like, oh, I am. Thank God. Okay. You know? so, but anyway, I'm, uh, I was in Belgium, uh, and I was in Brussels. And I'm sitting at a cafe. My wife says, isn't that somebody who, that guy sitting next to you, isn't that? Who is that? And I turned around and it was Jean-Claude Van Damme. And if you're going to see some, if you're going to see Jean-Claude Van Damme, you want to see the muscles of Brussels. That's in right. Brussels. That's know? awesome. It there was you so go. weird. <laughs> you well, know? we, we don't like to keep people too long, but you did hit on, huh. you did hit a nerve right there. And uh, while we're all Lord of the Rings fans, D-Doc is a huge Lord of the Rings fan. So, would would you oh, say yes. that that is your go-to, Jonathan, or or 
would you like to see a role uh, in something related to the Lord of the Rings, you know, uh, realm? A role of, like me? anything, a voice, voice. <laughs> no, not as a Hobbit. Not not putting you that. Well, far, actually, but... I I would love that. Holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've always been envious. No, I love the Peter Jackson films, and um, uh, you know, actually, that's like you know, I don't like. Im I'm not as I talked about mimicking, but but that's what my son and I always imitate. Um, the first scene is it. D Doc, are you the fan of? You're the big fan of the films. Yes, yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You, know, you know, it's in the beginning when Frodo goes, "You're late." You know, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, McKellen is like, "I'm not late, Frodo Baggins." Uh, you know, I forgot. God damn, I forgot the lines already. But when, when oh, a like, wizard yeah, is always precisely wizard, on time. Uh, yeah. Precisely when he means to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that whole thing you know and that whole like you know uh, that's great Bill jumps and hugs him <laughs> you know that whole that whole scene but anyway um no yes i'm a huge i'm a huge fan of the jackson films and uh yeah that oh my god yes i would love to well, be involved with that i'm i'm actually currently listening to um andy circus actually just did the audiobooks uh of the original trilogy he that's actually right. just narrated um them uh, i think it's i think really? it said 2021 on audible so I actually just started the fellowship of that. I, I'm I'm just in the beginning of that uh, now, so it's really interesting to listen to him do all the characters from Lord of the Rings. So oh, it's like, wow, that that actually was something I was going to lead into with you. Is like, um, is there almost like a fraternity of audiobook narrators, basically? <laughs> because like, I um, you know, for uh, Game of Thrones audiobooks, Roy Dotrice did those, which like yes, to me, like he right. just really just rat which he actually just passed away within the last yeah. couple year or two which sucks because i i wish he could finish the audiobooks of game oh. of thrones um but and uh jim dale did uh i think it's jim dale who did harry potter and stuff like that yes, i'm just did. like i wonder if all these guys like kind of know each other because uh, i don't know it's like kind of just a very interesting niche that you're in it, it is a very it is a very interesting niche um, and I be, feel very fortunate to be a part of it. There is kind of a fraternity. There really is. Um, uh, and it's getting more and more tied together because we're, we're just able to, we, the, the industry, the medium has grown so much that we're meeting each other. They used to be almost like a separate, it was almost like hmm. um, in the rap worlds where there was an LA and a New York kind mm -hmm. of story <laughs> thing going on. <laughs> You know, um, and I was on the East Coast, and there was a lot of West Coast <laughs> narrators, and we all had different styles that we followed. You know, it was very different. And um, but now we're, uh, there's a lot more, you know, of a crossover and connection between everybody. And there are, we do, you know, um, we have our, you know, associations and our organizations, and we have a lot of friendships. It, it is true. You know, a lot of, I've I've met a lot of great people through through. Um, the audiobook world and the narration narration world. Usually I like to play bingo with our with our shows. And one of the things that I did not have check marked on this bingo card was East Coast, West Coast, rap, war, you know, bangland, <laughs> back and forth. That I did not see that coming up in any discussion we were going to talk about. So you bringing that one up right there, that that one that got us a free space right there. That was great. Um no, <laughs> so no, I love I love it. I love it. Uh, I feel like I've talked my head off to you and asked you too many questions. Brent or D Doc, are there other things we have not bothered Jonathan with tonight? Go ahead, Brent. And I'm just going to do this because I feel like I need to. So it, it, it is a running joke of mine because this is the whole Dooku fan <laughs> uh, that they, they made fun of my guy Dooku because he got his hands cut off and his head cut off. And I believe it was Tony Molinero, your brother, well, no, your brother's the one that said yeah. that they had the Dooku lightsaber out, the lightsaber hilt out. And who's going to want to handle the lightsaber hilt? And I said, I actually kind of like the lightsaber hilt because it's a little different. So it became mm -hmm. my running gag. So I kind of got to explain it to everybody. But from your time with Star Wars and looking at, I'm sure you're looking at images and watching things. Is there a particular lightsaber hilt that you think you are drawn to or that you really stands out that you like? I, I, you know, when you talk about it, I actually like that hilt. I, I liked it. That's what I'm talking about. Now, we've yeah, also, yeah. 
we've also joked around about making a t-shirt of just the Dooku hilt and just having that across the chest. And, and I, I would wear that loud and proud. And he was dispatched too quickly. You Agreed. know, you'd think like with all that's like, what the, come on. He's such, it reminded me, this is another Liam Neeson actually um, it in. reference, but there was the film Rob Roy. Mm. Did you guys see mm -hmm. that? Rob Roy? But I, I know of it. It's also a good drink. At the end where <laughs> Rob Roy is this brute, it's Liam Neeson, you know, and he's fighting Tim Roth, who's this amazing fencer, very uh, precise. He's like, he fences where Rob Roy uses like a broadsword. And he's like, and, and throughout the whole thing in the battle at the end, the Tim Roth is just murdering Rob. I mean, he's just slicing him there and there. He's so precise and so technically proficient. He's such a fantastic duelist. And then luck, just it's one of those weird things where he just makes, he goes to swing at him and Rob Roy grabs the guy's sword and like just luckily takes his sword and like decapitates him. Very similar, you know. And and then everybody goes, well, <laughs> next time I'll, bo I'll bet on you, Rob Roy. And I thought, well, next time he's going to fight somebody who's not going to be so careless and he's not going to do that well because he kind of sucks as a, as a swordsman. You know, so it was, it was the same thing what I think with Dooku. It's like, come on. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. Yeah. What, what was your, with the new series, have you talked about like Book of Boba Fett? How, what did you think about it? Because I kind of saw it almost like it was Mandalorian 2.5. <laughs> well, you know, I mentioned Mark Newbold earlier from Star Wars Insider. And actually in an interview I did with him months before Book of Boba Fett came out, he goes, Joe, be prepared. This is going to be Mandalorian season 2.5. Oh, um, so, that. so weird that he said yeah. that. Um, I would say... There were so many different things about Book of Boba Fett, um, but I enjoyed that they went into the depth and they recreated the the character. Like they, I'll steal Rebel Force Radio. Rebel Force Radio said it, I think, best. They couldn't make him the same Boba Fett that everybody thought he was going to be because they actually took that character and made it into the Mandalorian, like that kick-ass yeah, bounty hunter, right. cool guy. Right. It's now the Mandalorian. So they said, how can we make him change and be different than what people are expecting, but still make him be that really cool fighter, but not the same guy, not just have two same guys in the same story. And so I like that they went that different story. I like that they gave him that he was almost reborn coming out of the Sarlacc. He had a new family in the Tuscans and he was looking to change who he was, but he still had that, that fight inside of him. Um, so I, I liked all that, but still my favorite episodes were the ones with Luke, uh, Mando, and Ahsoka in them. So that's just right. my two cents on it. Frank, exactly. Go yeah. ahead. So my two cents on, I think some people were upset because they expected a lot more Boba Fett just because of the name of the title. And yeah. they've waited 40 years for Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, if you sit back and look at it from a big picture, it works. Because it is a continuation. We found Boba Fett during The Mandalorian. And this is just a big picture, long-term storyline. So if you go all the way back to The Mandalorians and go Mandalorian 1, Mandalorian 2, Boba Fett, all of this is just essentially one long, continuous storyline that I believe will be eventually working us towards the sequels. And I know some people won't be happy about it, but I think they're going to try to weave in and make fill some of those plot gaps for the sequels I as think well. They need to work on they need to work on um, Fennec and Boba Fett in developing them a little uh, a little stronger in a way. I thought that they were mm -hmm. very one dimensional, and yep. it had a lot to do with the performances. Um, I thought, but what what got me was that when they introduced what was it number five or episode five that mando came in mm -hmm. yeah i think chapter five so yep when they introduced him and all the characters from his world like you said you know you're interested in like luke and ahsoka and you know it's like all the characters that i thought were really fascinating were the characters from his series you know timothy yeah. oliphant and oh yeah 
You know, I mean, the whole world and the ones I, I'm just being blunt, but the ones I didn't care for, like the mods and, you know, a, a, all the characters from the new world, maybe with the exception of the Wookiee, you know, mm -hmm. the, oh, yeah. the, and, and, um, and, and I like Jennifer Beals, but I really didn't find them uh, fascinating. And, and actually, mm -hmm. my son was actually rooting for the mods to get killed off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like, if they're going to kill somebody, he was like, when they were shooting the Wookiee, he was like, no. And then the, the Gamorrean <laughs> guards died. No. And then he was like, but they're alive. You know, it was just like right. that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, that's what. Yeah. Not to be too critical. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, they kind of seem like throwaway characters, though, too. A lot of the Boba Fett or a lot of the people from the Boba Fett series seemed very throwawayable and tossable. I agree. Exactly. Yeah. D doc, go ahead. Yeah. And I mean, I, I pretty much am aligned with a lot of the points that most of you guys just made. Like I, I had my criticisms of the show. Um, I did enjoy it. And like, I, mm -hmm. I think I said on, uh, I think I said on maybe the sixth or the finale episode where once it was over, I was like, all right, did I have like, let me lay out the memorable points from this show. I thought there was memorable points. I thought it was a good show. There was stuff I maybe didn't like about it, but also in my mind, I'm trying to th like keep in mind, I think they're just building this bigger story, which Boba is still going to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And who knows, maybe we'll get uh, an episode of The Mandalorian where Boba is the main character of that episode or something like that. But I do wish we got, a little more of him and Fennec. I mean, that was one of the things I said I was looking forward to the most when that show started was uh, I was like, I'm so I'm looking forward to the expansion of Fennec Shan's character and Boba Fett and stuff. And uh, I mean, I thought we got a decent amount of screen time with Fennec and everything, but like, I don't know. I did want a little bit so, more. I was gonna say, so I know you were excited about Fennec to see her develop and yeah, we did have screen time, but do you think they really developed her? No, <laughs> I think no. she's the exact same character as <laughs> what we had in the Mandalorian. Can I kill him? Honestly, can I kill him? <laughs> can I kill him? So, uh, Jonathan, one of our other co-hosts, Alfie, who's not here, he's been saying since the Mandalorian started, um, just be prepared that <clears throat> Star Wars, Lucasfilm, Disney Plus is creating the the MCU, the Marvel universe, but in Star Wars with all these shows on Disney Plus. And he keeps envisioning that all of them, the Ahsoka show, the Boba Fett, the Mandalorian, and maybe if they ever do the Rangers of the New Republic, but others like that will all intertwine until they find a new big baddie that they all have to team up against to, mm. to finish up with before you get to the sequel trilogy. Or like Brent said, the first order will be building while this is going on 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 the other side of it and everything. So I, I'll take his word for it. He's he's pretty much on top of it. But I, I would say we like the show. Um, there were some things we we all thought they could do better. But come on, we're we're humans. We all probably yeah. think that about it, pretty much everything. So, um, but yeah. But thanks for asking because we never get asked questions. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Guys, I look I, like I said. I like Jonathan. One, I love that you've come on and been a part of the show. I like to keep everybody like an hour. And believe it or not, I have people tell me, "Gosh, when your shows are around an hour, it's perfect because I can listen to half of it on the way to work and half of it on the way back from work." <laughs> and when we do the two-hour shows, they're like, "Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't get it all in. I want to hear it." And blah blah blah. So anyway, um, I don't want to keep you too long. Is there anything, I know Brotherhood's coming up for you. We're really excited about that. I cannot wait to get that one because it's going to be coming out right before the new Kenobi series. Um, is there anything else in the works that you have going on or things that you you can talk about? Don't talk about things you can't talk about because we don't want to be the ones getting you in trouble. Uh, right. Are there things you're working on or things you're excited about coming up in your career or in audio books or anything like that? Um, some of them I I did sign some NDAs, so I can't, sure. I can't really sure. talk about. Um, uh, so with you know there there is brotherhood that's coming up, but I I don't even know anything about it, and I couldn't talk about it if I if if I did. It's okay. Um, but um, yeah yeah I'm always you know I'm always that's what I'm very fortunate. I I'm always continually working. I'm do I do a lot I do a lot of um uh sci-fi series for um 
a publisher called Podium, Podium Audio. Okay. So if you go there, there's a lot of, there's a great series I'm doing called the Destiny's Crucible series. Uh, that's one of them. I know that I'm going to be doing some work for them um, coming up. And uh, wow, quite a few, actually, quite a few series that are through that specific publisher. And, um, you know, you can always go on to Audible. And uh, they always have something new. You know, they kind of have a list of what's coming out, you know, in the future. Sure. And and are you doing any? I know we mentioned Max Payne and Red Dead Redemption. Are are there any other things you're working on like that 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 you want to promote or anything no, that you no can talk about? No video games at okay. the moment. No okay. video games at the moment. Um, I have done. You know, once again, you can see a list of of mm -hmm. of video games that I have done beyond those stories. Um, briefly before before I'm going to keep it short. But you're the right, fascinating thing about Max Payne Three was that. When we did that one, it really wasn't a video game where it was my voice. We Everybody had to audition like a film audition. And we filmed it on a with a green screen in mocap. So it was a motion capture um, pr production. And mm -hmm. it took about a year to do everything. And it was fascinating, you know, because people were sitting on boxes, you know, and doing any kind of green screen stuff. And then they added everything in. And the graphics of that specific game, Max Payne 3, Sao Paulo Knights, uh, is pretty fantastic. And that's me. That's me 10 years ago. <laughs> Not me today, but but it's it's the character I play, which is one of the villains. His name is Colonel Becker. There's like a group of it's like a James Bond thing where there's like a. Uh, you know, a cachet of villains, you get worse and worse and worse and worse. And then okay. I'm like one of the, the really bad guys. He's like a, a cop that, you know, um, deals in like, uh, he, he, they kill kids on the street. And then he like, he's like <laughs> one of those like Brazilian cops that kills homeless people and stuff like that. Wow. So, but that, but when you see the image, that's, that's me. So it's, that was a really cool project to do. I'm gonna look that up. Go D doc. Uh, so uh, I just heard Red Dead Redemption drop. That is one thing that I did not uh, I missed on the uh, <clears throat> on things you've done. Uh, what what do you do for Red Dead Redemption? Because I uh, that was absolutely of, love that game. <laughs> that was part of Rockstar, um, and they they did the Max Payne uh, video games too. I that was I I it was a long time ago. I played like some a corrupt Mexican sheriff <laughs> on that one. Um, but that was, and actually, I even did a, I did an old Republic, um, video game for for Star Wars. I, I did um, see okay. that on there. Of, we did a, did a bunch of, that was also a long time ago, and it's just a bunch of um, of uh, Empire, you know, soldiers and lackeys and stuff like that. Awesome, awesome. Well, well, one, I'll, Brent, any closing thoughts before we go tonight? Anything you want to hit on before we leave? No, it's awesome to talk to somebody that has connections. And it's just, I, I love, I don't know, the people that we can get onto this show is amazing. So I appreciate you coming <laughs> on and talking to us and just uh, letting us pick your brain about some of the uh, processes and what you enjoy about the world and Star Wars and everything else. Yep. Thank agreed. you so much for having me. You know, I would recommend if you, you know, you could talk off off screen but you know if there's other people that you want you know you'd like me to recommend to you i think the our yeah. producer uh would be terrific for you to to talk to we he'd would be, we would love that really yeah uh, really would give you a lot of information and and great stories you got it you got it uh d doc any closing thoughts no uh, basically what brent said i mean it's just awesome to talk to you and have a conversation with someone who's the voice of a story that just wraps you into this star wars world so it's it's just like talking to mark i mean it's awesome to talk to you and just hear your own personal experiences and stories to get where you're at so i'm excited for uh the, the new stuff you're going to bring us thank you so much maybe we can have both both of us on one I, day i was just terrific. i was just gonna say that i almost almost want to do a dueling banjos and have sure. you two <laughs> go back and forth at each other a little bit um, we, we no so we need to come we've done them in the studios Okay, we, go ahead, we need to have some fanfic and just have oh, these guys gosh. just rock through some fanfic from one of our episodes. You know, oh, Nick, wow. my our co-host Nick Shesky yes, wrote, he wrote a, some. a short story of Grand Moff Tarkin after or right before, I can't remember, right after, right after A New Hope. He wrote a fan fiction about Grand Moff Tarkin. We should send you guys both that and let you just read parts of it. 
Um, sure. I will look into that. I will look into that. Um, one, uh, you know what? We would always love to talk to anybody you suggest. If you do know how to get in touch with Drew Carpishan, the author of Darth Bane, I've reached out to him a few times. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard back from him, but you know, now that we can say, hey, we had the voice of your books on, you know, if you want to pull the strings and say, come and talk to Joe and his gang, we would love to do that. But again, Jonathan, from, from me and the crew, um, for me reaching out to you and you just responding and saying, yeah, let's do this. I can't thank you enough. It means the world to us that you would take the time to do this for a, a few guys that just love Star Wars and love just having fun. And so we appreciate your time so much. And any way we can help you in the future, just let us know and we'll keep promoting your work because it's it's great work and it draws us into Star Wars even more. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. It's been great fun and a, a really a real pleasure. No worries. And and you know, for, for the Rule of Galaxy fans, I you know, we we just keep trying to do the best we can and bring people on who mean something to Star Wars. And Jonathan has done such great work. So hopefully you enjoy this and, and uh, we'll keep trying to do more and hopefully Jonathan will find us some more great guests to have on soon. But for me, for for D Doc, for Brent, for the rest of the crew who couldn't be here tonight. Thank you so much for listening to us, giving us a chance for 127 episodes. We hope to be doing it for 127 more. Hopefully, we'll see. We look forward to seeing any and all of you that can make it to the ICI Triple C in Nashville, April 29th through May 1st. Give us a shout out and let us know you're coming. And, um, you know, you can always, again, follow us at Rule the Galaxy SW at Twitter, uh, Rule the Galaxy SW at gmail.com. To email us your thoughts, any comments. Um, and just rule the galaxy at Facebook and YouTube. And for those of you who will be listening to the show, I cannot wait for you to hear Jonathan's version of Neil Diamond doing an intro <laughs> for Rule the Galaxy. So uh, thank you again for that, Jonathan. I uh, can't, I, that's You're one welcome. of my favorite things now. Um, but to everybody out there, thanks again. And until next week, may the force be with you. <laughs>